If you knew anything about sneakers or basketball in the 90s, you know that by the year 1990, the creators of Nike's signature Air Jordan line already had the game on lock. Michael Jordan had been taking the world of basketball by storm, and Tinker Hatfield had risen to the top of the sneaker design industry and earned his place at the helm of the most influential sneaker franchise the world has ever seen. Much like the clutch plays that Jordan had been executing on the court leading the Bulls to victory in the face of certain defeat, Tinker Hatfield had saved Nike's relationship with Michael Jordan with his design of the Jordan 3 and since then, the Jordan 4 and the Jordan 5 had been sensational. They made a statement and they established that Air Jordan was here to stay and the best was yet to come from both Michael Jordan and Jordan Brand. What is up everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, but if you're new here, uh, my name is Brian and my brother Nacho and I make videos on sneaker history and all things related to sneaker culture. Uh, I know we haven't been posting a lot, but that's going to change here as we both try to quit our day jobs and commit to doing this full time. If you notice, we've just passed 100,000 subscribers, so thank you guys so much for that. It really means a lot, and we're going to do something very special for you guys here in the next couple of months. Um, this is the first of a series of uploads, so um, yeah, be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys so much for supporting and being patient with us as we uh, try to navigate through our day jobs and doing this full time as you can tell that these videos they're pretty they're pretty it, it takes a long time to produce these but you know we're, we're trying to change the upload frequency and i and i think you're going to be happy so um with that being said guys let's get into the history of the air jordan 6. So like we mentioned earlier every single jordan release had been a wild success since tinker took the reins the jordan 3 the jordan 4 and the Jordan 5 were all massive hits with sneaker fans, and each were connected to unforgettable moments in Michael Jordan's career. As most of you know, we've covered the history of most of the sneakers that I just mentioned, So, um, but if you, if you haven't checked it out yet, I'll put a little suggestion card here. I know it's early in the video, but I'm gonna put it here just in case you're new and you wanna kind of start from the Jordan 1 to Jordan 2 to Jordan 3 up until the 6, so boom, right there. When it came to designing the Jordan 6, Tinker again worked closely with MJ, sticking to that classic blend of luxury and performance designs that Jordans had become known for. On the luxury side of things, Hatfield included features like a heel tab inspired by the spoiler of a Porsche and a sleek minimal toe tip that MJ requested himself, citing the sleek tips of the Italian dress shoes he had recently been growing fond of. The spoiler heel tab would be the first of many automobile designs that Tinker Hatfield would incorporate into the Air Jordan line over the years. Another interesting thing about the Jordan 6 is that uh, Michael Jordan actually complained to Nike and Tinker Hatfield about the, the easeability, is that a word, easeability? It basically, all the previous Jordan models before the six, I don't know if you've owned a pair of fours, fives, or threes, especially threes, you can't just slide them on, you know, you gotta really loosen up the laces and put them on. Um, and, and he wanted something that would be more accessible quickly. So when designing the six, Hatfield included large die cut rubberized tongues with two big finger holes. The tongue, along with the heel tab, ensured ease of use and in keeping with Hatfield's approach to the Jordan line, they were, it, I mean, it's classic Tinker Hatfield. They were ergonomic, functional features that also pushed the envelope stylistically. Something Tinker Hatfield has always done. I mean, think of like the Nike Air Hirachi, for example, with the neoprene booty. The Jordan 6 first launched in 1991, retailing for $125, and it came in five original colorways. The infrareds, the varsity reds, the carmines, the off-white and maroon colorway, and the white and sport blue. Depending on the colorway, the Jordan 6's main material was either nubuck or full grain leather. And like the Jordan 5, it featured lace locks and clear segments of rubber on the outsole. The Jordan 6 was kind of like the last Nike Jordan, because after the Jordan 6, uh, Nike and Air Jordan as brands kind of established their own identity. So in that way, this was kind of like the last Jordan with an air, a visible air unit for a long time. In fact, the air unit wouldn't be seen again on a J until many years later on the Jordan 16. The Jordan 6 would also be the last Jordan to sport Nike branding on the shoe's exterior. And finally, in a similar spirit, the Jordan 6 would be the final Air Jordan model promoted by the familiar ad campaign that we all love featuring Spike Lee's Mars Blackman character. With the Jordan 6, Tinker had delivered another classic certain to go down in history as a sneakerhead favorite. I know the infrareds are some grails for some of you guys out there, and I get it, trust me, it's a dope sneaker. But even more legendary than the design of this shoe 
was the performance of the player who wore it. And I'm talking about Michael Jordan. Jordan made unforgettable plays in the Air Jordan models. But the six is the sneaker that Jordan wore as he led the Bulls in the charge to their first ever championship win. In the 1990-91 season, Jordan racked up the accolades, man. He had 31.5 points per game average. Of course, he was voted first team all NBA, first team all defense, six time all star, league MVP, and finally the NBA Finals MVP. MJ had been racking up personal accolades for years, and no previous individual accomplishment could compare to the glory of leading Chicago to their very first championship win. It was an emotional moment of vindication for the Bulls and everyone who had been rooting for them. Through trial and error, the promising wins and the discouraging losses, the Bulls had finally made it and Michael Jordan finally held the trophy in his hands. All right, so now that we got the history of the shoe out of the way, let's look into some of the most classic colorways of the Jordan 6 and some of my favorites and probably some of your favorites. I'd love to know which are your favorites, so leave it, damn, I said favorites like five times. I'd love to know which ones you guys like the most. Um, post it in the comments below. There's the all-star, sometimes referred to as the chameleon, sporting an iridescent colorway similar to that of the Jordan 1 all-star. But how about the Olympics? Man, these are classic. They were worn by Ray Allen during the Sydney Olympic Games. Definitely one of my favorites. There are the green suede and like Mike Gatorade collabs. We've also got the Air Jordan 6 Low, which debuted in 2006 and retro in 2015. I don't know how I feel about those. We also have the Dorenbeckers, released in February 2019, which retailed for $190. Always dope to see what comes from the Dorenbecker freestyle program. The Defining Moments pack, probably one of the most classic, classic Jordan colorways of all time, um, with those gold hits. Uh, you know, we, we just saw a retro of that last year. Um, I didn't cop, by the way, but I should have. I kind of regret it now. But how about Jordan 6 cleats, which have kind of been like a common sight on the feet of Jordan sponsored NFL players like Earl Thomas and Des Bryant. I think some of, most of those are customs, but I think it's dope that NFL players rock Jordans on the field. It's kind of wild. Cigar and champagne colorways, inspired by Mike celebrating the championship win with cigars and champagne. And you guys know MJ loves cigars. So both these models rock an embossed stamp on the heel and insole and gold championship ring lace locks. Like we've seen with some Jordan releases and retros, we saw minor differences from the originals and the most notable and obviously the most controversial would be the Nike Air logo to the Jumpman logo. Also there were some weird color changes and they also added 3M reflective fabric to the perforated holes in the body of the sneaker, which is actually a design feature that I really like. But I want to hear what you guys like so please leave us a comment and with that being said guys that is going to do it for uh, the history of the Air Jordan 6. A little bit of news, a little bit of uh, self-promotion here um, as you can see I'm wearing my sneaker enthusiast hat I don't know if it's focusing on that but our podcast is going really well we actually just finished up a podcast with the director of Yeezy believe it or not Mr. Stephen Smith um, he probably wouldn't like me calling him Mr. but Stephen Smith the legend uh, we just had him on the podcast we've had man we've had a lot of people we've had Nick Engvall from Sneaker History on uh, we've also had Dr. Souls on we've had a lot of really really cool guests and I think you guys would really, really enjoy our podcast. It's called Sneaker Enthusiasts. It's available anywhere you get podcasts, um, Spotify, iTunes, even on SoundCloud. So check it out. Uh, the Sneaker Enthusiast podcast is me and Nacho. Um, and we sit down with a guest every week and we just geek out on sneakers. So that's my plug. That's it. That's the show. Thank you guys so much for, for, for tuning in. Please peep the videos or the, the link that I'll, the playlist that I'll make for you guys here or here. Dude, I'm rusty. I don't remember which one it is, but it's here or here. And uh, there'll be a playlist, a master playlist of all our sneaker history videos. I'll, you know what? I'll make a playlist of just Jordan videos, just for you. Boom. Nothing but Jordan videos there. Um, check it out. Let me know what you guys think. And I will see you over in those videos. And if not, until next time, guys. Thank you guys so much. Peace. All love. You like the new backdrop?